glad to be here, and I'm glad I was a second, because as I was listening and just looking out, the theme is love thy neighbor, love one another, and believe it or not, here we are, different religions, different faiths. You're here with this openness of heart. This is an act of love, just simply to be open, to come here and to be with different religions. This is new for me. I've never done this before. But um, I'd have to say that one of the things I've learned from Islam, they have this connection between nature and beauty. And when you read the lives of the saints, the saints all talk about discovering God in nature. So that's something we can bring with us. And uh, um, uh, the, as you know, Christianity grew out of uh, Judaism. And there's a story about a Jewish rabbi who gets, uh, he's heading to work, he goes through the town square, heading to take the train into Chicago, and he sees this young man in a three-piece suit, always running to the train. And one day he says, young man, why do you run? To make a living. And the rabbi said, maybe you're running in the wrong direction. In other words, let life catch up with you. So we steal from Judaism, um, the Sabbath, we call it our Sunday worship, that we have to take worship and, and spend time together as family, reflecting on the gospel, on the stories, on our traditions, to let life catch up with us so that we are reminded who we are, that we're sons and daughters of God. It doesn't get any better than that. And so, again, we can learn from one another. And I, I think just the fact that we're all here today is an act of love and especially for you with your open hearts, to share, to listen to different religions. I grew up, I'm a product of the Catholic school system. In fifth grade, check this out, I was told in 1965 that only Catholics were going to heaven. All of you were not going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a family, they were Lutherans who lived next door, the Coleman family, and I still remember in fifth grade thinking, poor Debbie Coleman, she's not gonna make it to heaven. <laughs> well, um, I use that as a, a starting point in that I grew up in what we would call the dualistic mind. Who's in, who's out, who's holy, who's unholy, who's worthy, who's unworthy, who's going to heaven? Um, and I call that because in fifth grade, the big sin was missing mass on Sunday or telling a lie or stealing. That was the big sin. We never understood the social part, which is when we separate from one another, that you're worthy or I'm worthy and you're unworthy, I call that, I name that as sin. Whenever we disconnect, separate ourselves from one another, that's sin. And it's important that we name it. It's sort of like going to a doctor. You have this pain. Is it cancerous? It has to be diagnosed. Jesus was always about naming what was going on. So we have to spend time naming what's out there. And once you name the sin, it can't hide. Uh, that's that story of Legion. They, they tell Jesus, don't meddle with us. He said, Legion, the demons come out. They want to hide. Sin wants to hide. Cancer wants to hide. So as a Catholic church, we look at the importance of naming our sin. Um, and so uh, I grew up, again, as Catholic. And we're 2,000 years old. But I'm going to say this. On a spiritual level, uh, you guys are going to laugh. But we're only about 14 years old. We're a teenager. We haven't learned about contemplation, um, about, uh, you know, holding the opposites together. Um, and so we're slowly regaining, so be patient with us as we try to understand this mystery which we stand upon as a Catholic faith community. We believe in the Paschal mystery that on Good Friday, God did this. He took death and darkness, and out of death and darkness created light and life. That's the mystery. That's the grand mystery that we're in. And we always have to maintain that sense of mystery, that we're a mystery. And somehow in this mystery, God put this tragic side. We have war. We have suffering. Uh, we have divorce. We have gun violence. It's part of God's mystery. But we do know this. When we, one of the things that we did do uh, that we, have, we can say that the Catholic Church was carried forward over the past 2,000 years, even though we're 14 years old, 
It was the mystics and the saints and the desert fathers who carried the message forward, the paschal mystery, that out of darkness comes new light. Here's a great example of hope. Hope is when you can get a grasp on the problem, the, the size, the, the, the depth, um, the totality, getting a sense of what the problem is, that's the beginning of hope. That's why it's important that we name our sin. We come together, say, there's a broken part here. We need to work on that. But all suffering, when we look at the saints, all suffering is transformative. And if we don't learn how to transform our pain and suffering, you know what we do with it? We transmit it on others. I help out in a high school, and I tell the high school students, I don't recommend you watch this, but the Jerry Springer show, those are people who have not learned the mystery of suffering. So they transport and transfer their pain on others. It's what we call victim identity. So we have to name that as a, as a sin. That, that undermines what it means to love one another. So sort of the flip side of love is really just naming the sin. And so we tell them, you know what? There's a better thing than victim identity. It's your identity. You're a son and daughter of God. That's your true identity. And so um, then we work with them a little bit more about, um, and we're learning this again from, from Buddhism, contemplation, that pay attention, stay awake. Why did Jesus and St. Paul say, stay awake, stay awake. Catch yourself whenever you get angry. Where did that judgment come from? That has nothing to do with that person I just got angry at. What's going on inside of me? Where is that coming from in my heart that I need to look at? And then we deal with it. And then God works with us. Another act of love when we can look at ourselves and not look out there. That what's going on inside of us? And so it's sort of like looking at people as mirrors. What are they reflecting back to me that I might not like about myself? And again, the beginning step towards transformation, change, and hope. Um, I'd like to end with uh, one of the great uh, mystics, my favorite saint, was St. Francis, who did it so well. Um, he found in life that you had this balance between prayer and action. Always, again, being connected to the poor. When I was in fifth grade, remember, I was told that only Catholics were going to heaven. It was not until 1980 when Aurora discovered that we have an increased homelessness problem. So we opened up our door on Thursday with six other churches that were not Catholic. And that was the first time I was rubbing shoulders and elbows with non-Catholics. I grew up, again, dualistic. The, the poor, the handicapped, they brought to us, they brought us together. Isn't that amazing? The poor, the homeless, brought us all together as one. That is what I call an act of love. And so St. Francis had within his heart um, always that little treasure for the, the poor. Um, those who were rejects, he kept them close because he knew that that's where God is always going to be found. If we stay close to the poor, we'll stay close to God. So he was anchored in action. And then contemplation. Contemplation really is, and again, we're still trying to understand it and work it. It's being able to stand uh, in the middle of opposites and not say, OK, the guys with the white hats are right, the guys with the black hats are wrong. No, it's simply to hold that tension and to say, you know what? You're speaking some truth and you're speaking some truth. Can you hold the tension? That was Jesus on the cross, holding the tension, always inviting people back to one. And my, fav my uh, favorite gospel is John, that we all may be one, act of love, because God sees us in a whole different light. So uh, just to sum up, what we're trying to do as Catholics is to bring back our tradition a deeper understanding of suffering, that it's all transformative. Um, a deeper understanding of sin. Sin is when we divide ourselves from one another, separate ourselves. We're really separating ourselves from God. And this balance between action and contemplation. 
St. Francis was able to see God in a bug, a worm, a leper. Um, he was able to see God in everything, in a tree. And so for, for us Catholics, St. Francis teaches us that God came to do one thing, to teach us how to see, to see him in everything. And when we look at the Gospels, the four Gospels, and we smash them together, we find Jesus doing two things, and I'll end on this note. He's always healing and forgiving. Healing and forgiving. And that's the act of love that comes out from his heart. And so these are the things, again, we're working on. And um, we're borrowing from you as well, especially as we learn more about contemplation and listening and being awake. Um, the great Father Anthony DeMello, three things in life we have to be about. Awareness, awareness, awareness. Become aware. Where is that coming from? And that God is finally within all of us. That the divine image, John Manley Hopkins said this, the immortal diamond, check this out. It's in all of us because we've been made and designed in God's great image. But the catch is, it's too good to be true. It's too good to be true that God would live in me. I'm not perfect. That's what we have to work towards and break through so that we can all continue to live as brothers and sisters reflecting the inner heart of God, which is all about love one another love your neighbor, that God is in us, he works through us, he's a part of us. All we have to do is learn how to see that in the same way that St. Francis and the great mystics learned.